Karen Haddon. I know Karen. So. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see if we... Is this... No, it's not Rhonda. Go ahead, Karen. And then we're going to go to Mary Beth. No? Okay. Noel Mar Marquez, Patricia, Cardona, and Lon Burnham. Okay. And this is Karen Haddon. Good evening, my name is Karen Haddon. I'm the director of a nonprofit organization called Seed Coalition Sustainable Energy and Economic Development Coalition. Uh, there are so many reasons why I think this project ought to be withdrawn, um, this and WCS. Um, many speakers have made those comments. Um, this is not the right place for high-level radioactive waste. There's no justice. It doesn't make sense, and it is not safe. In one of your first slides, <coughs> excuse me, you mentioned that you're here to ensure that it's safe. We're here, I think you can get the message from the people in this room tonight, it is not safe. Let's be clear about that. And I've read through the documents, and I've never seen an application like this that is so full of holes. It's half done. It's sort of like the karst topography, which is Swiss cheese. It's like the same thing. Um, there is so much information missing. And I've looked back. This land is the exact same site for the GMAP project that was proposed years ago. For decades, there are some people in this area who have been trying to bring in deadly poison. And I don't know why. It's got to be greed. There's no other good explanation. And when you compare that previous application and you look at the environmental analysis, you will find that it is much more complete than what is passing for an environmental report today. So in your review, I urge you to go back to that original document and study it and add in what has been left out. I also encourage you to look at climate change, which to my uh, best of my knowledge is not being considered, and to look at the new SMU report. There are so many factors that need to be considered in this analysis. Furthermore, when you come to alternatives, let's really consider some. Not just whether to do this site or not. Let's consider what alternatives that land could be used for, whatever it may be, because there are many. And there are many ways to build the economy and to build this community. And everybody wants that. But why risk everything existing for a few jobs and for money for some people? I think the application should make clear some things that are not clear. How much money? Who gets it? How does it get distributed? And I found myself trying to find an analogy for this. Um, it was very late at night, and I was like, this is all about paying people to do what no one else will do. Nobody on the East Coast wants it. Nobody on the West Coast wants this stuff. So it's like, let's find a community that we can bribe. How much money is it going to take? What will it take? And so I started thinking about the fact that, um, OK, I like rattlesnakes. I'm fine with them. But I kind of like them where they are. They have their role, their place in nature. I have no desire to have a loose rattlesnake in my bedroom. And you could not pay me to any amount of money to have a rattlesnake in my bedroom loose for 24 hours. That would be a deadly poison. And then you could not even pay me more to do it for a year or 100 or 120 years, nor could you give me any money that would say, OK, we're going to keep adding snakes. Um, so there's 10,000 of them in your room over 20 years. And you know, I can see some fancy math because I look at the license application and I see these fancy formulas that reduce it down to no risk because it's never happened before. Well, I'll bet every single one of 10,000 snakes never bit anybody before. But I'll bet if you put them all in my room, I get bitten. <laughs> and you know, who knows if I'd survive. I, I know that this is a very strange analysis. But, you know, I think this high-level radioactive waste is a thousand times more risky than, than the rattlesnake that never bit anybody. And I don't buy this um, mathematical magic 
where we say it's never happened before, so it's not going to. NRC's own studies done for Yucca Mountain show that accidents are going to happen. The question is how fast. The testing, we see posters of the testing. That testing has mostly been computer modeling. It is not full-scale testing. A lot of times it uh, can be small-scale testing in a few instances, and they don't tell you the full picture. They don't tell you what happened after the test period. They don't tell you all the details. We have already had train crashes head-on, 65 miles per hour in West Texas. Could you sum up? I will. Okay. That exceeds all of the testing that's been done. Furthermore, I think that this um, license application needs to clarify because it says conflicting things on many points. One of them who would have title to the waste, whether it's DOE or private hands. That has got to be made clear because depending on that is whether this is legal to move forward at all. Secondly, there are two different numbers for the tons of waste and there is no total number of waste. So if you do 8680 tons um, for 500 canisters times 20, you come out with 173,000 tons of waste, whereas we're told this is going to be capped at 100,000. This needs to be clarified. I will wrap up in just a moment. Um, furthermore, there needs to be a legal description of the property because how can we, as members of the public, truly analyze the site and get down into the exact um, environmental issues when the defining boundaries are not given. I cannot understand why that is not in there. Um, the heavy train cars need to be looked at and the crumbling infrastructure of the rail lines. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, we have uh, Noel Marquez. Okay, I know. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Noel Marquez. Uh, I'm from a rural area of Artesia, New Mexico. Uh, the town of Artesia is one of many rural communities in New Mexico being left out of these NRC hearings. Uh, I am the face of Ground Zero and the father of this 11-year-old daughter here that always asks, why is it that old people always make rules and choices without considering us and future generations? The NRC and Holtec International are intentionally drowning the doubt the voices of thousands, if not millions, of New Mexico people by limiting our participation in the destination outcome of this extremely hazardous and toxic waste proposal. Your rush to make this whole thing dump a nightmare for us who live along the railroad tracks that only have one home and we plant our own gardens. We are outraged that you would disregard our families and children and unborn generations. Your nuclear regulated industries have little consideration for our livelihoods and our native peoples of the state of New Mexico. Nuclear power plants want to pass on their worst waste product, spent uranium fuel rods, where it is now currently in a safer mode of storage to a centralized temporary storage <coughs> facility. Who can blame them? It's killer stuff. And for the most part, 80% of our communities in New Mexico do not know what the NRC and Holtec are planning. An issue as critically important as this one, there should be an available environment impact study available in English, Spanish, and Navajo. Yep. With plenty of time to inform the public through newspaper, radio, television, billboards, and other public spaces in order for us to make an informed decision. 30 state representatives wrote a letter to you, the NRC, to slow the process down for the same purpose, and you denied the request. The reality is we don't live in a people-first democracy, but rather a money-power-first reality, and the NRC is their tool. The science and technology of your experiments are always flawed, as we have seen it with in Los Alamos, 
but the nuclear industries are always desecrating more of our lands, air, and water. Billions of taxpayer dollars are being spent at WIP to repair the damages. The state of New Mexico is already overburdened with 10 official radioactive dumps, and now you want to crown us with this worst possible dump ever. Our current and future generations would have to suffer the stigma and health consequences for hundreds, if not thousands of years, for being crowned the official nuclear dump of America. Many possible better job industries will reconsider before coming to our hazardous radioactive waste first state. The plain simple truth is the ionizing radiation hazards will not be contained to the whole tech site. My daughter always says, what makes you think you can control the molecules? <laughs> <laughs> it will contaminate many more lands through the transportation route, railway accidents from the eastern and western United States, accidents, acts of terrorism, weather-related causes, and sinkhole geology from the nearby extractive industries. There is also a major concern of contamination at the site with casts that are made for temporary storage but, for, but will probably never make it out of New Mexico. Holtec's guinea pig experiment is to stack these casts on top of each other, which has never been done before. And Noel, can I get you to, to sum up for us, please? Well, the state of New Mexico deserves better than this low quality science scheme and we will never consent to poisoning our current and future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Patricia? Patricia Cardona? Yeah, Irene. Okay. Everybody. Part of the world every year of my life. Um, 65 of them now. Um, I was also in the Texas legislature for 18 years and known as like the environmental activist in the Texas legislature. And one of the things in the environmental, I always call it the DREG committee because that's the nature of Texas politics. Uh, in theory, it's about protecting people's health. Um, and there's a permitting process. And I always remind people that the permitting process is permission from the government to pollute your air and water. And so the question is, we now have an application to pollute the air and water. It is inherently a polluting activity. And the question is, just how dangerous is this? And what are the probabilities? What kind of risk management are we looking at? In the Environmental Rec Committee of the Texas House of Representatives, we talked about cumulative impacts of air pollution permits. If you were to do a proper environmental impact statement, you will take into consideration the cumulative impacts on the communities of New Mexico, starting with the mining process where the Diné have been so polluted that they died disproportionately uh, of cancer for any population in the country. You will think about the cumulative impacts on the plutonium that's already in the Rio Grande River, which is a uh, water supply for people from Santa Fe downstream from there. You think about the cumulative impacts of the three-year hiatus of the WIP site. What if that had been worse? What if that had been an accident above ground? What kind of economic impacts are we talking about? See, I think the system is fundamentally flawed because the NRC does not exist to support public health and welfare in the environment. The NRC exists to serve as a chamber of commerce agency of a fundamentally flawed and I think immoral industry. I think it is immoral to split the atom and create plutonium. So I agree with the early speakers, the faith community, we are committing a sin against creation. And it is ex the cumulative impact is the NRC has, as Kevin tried to point out, that his question was parsed and nuanced. They've never denied a permit to pollute our air, water, and soil. They have never shown restraint that needs to be shown. So I would ask each of you, as a person of conscience, as Bishop Matheson said to the Pantex workers, resign your post. 
You work for a fundamentally flawed agency that is not about protecting the health and welfare. It is about corporate greed and corporate money. It is time to put an end to this. A true environmental impact statement will look at the concerns that I talked to Jose about. You know, I live within a mile of Tower 55. The transportation system in this country is fundamentally flawed. The, tra the, the railroad system is not owned by the national government. They don't have to to take the uh, product, and they can't. A lot of those bridges you know are over 100 years old. My, father, my grandfather worked on the Santa Fe Railroad. They're fundamentally flawed. The process here is fundamentally flawed because you are serving the industry that you're supposed to be protecting us from. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you, Lon. Um, um, I'm here to tell Hotec Hell no, we don't want it. I am so sick and tired of all these big companies coming into New Mexico or close to my town in Eunice wanting to give us all this crap, this crap that could kill us. And you know what? These folks are sitting up in their little McMansions in New York, Minnesota, San Antonio. Heck, I don't know where you live, and I really don't care. <laughs> but I am concerned about the transportation issue of this uh, cargo, 10,000 cargo uh, cars that are already too heavy. They're too heavy for the cars, they're too heavy for the railways. I'm also concerned about the impacts that it's going to have on the oil and gas and potash industries. Also, how is the uh, health and welfare uh, going to be considered in this area. We're already poor. We don't have insurance. You got to have a good job to get good insurance. I'm also concerned that these canisters are inferior. Do you realize there are canisters out there this thick and we're selling for something that's this thick? That's stupid. I'm also concerned that the waste will never be moved. We already know that 120 years will be way longer than any of us in this room. My little pie there, it'll be past her lifestyle, lifetime. This isn't a right thing to do. It's an injustice to this state, to this community, to these peoples. Most of the people in this area are like me brown skinned or darker. We speak another language. And we're at least 50% here. And that's an environmental injustice because they're basically saying it's okay to duck because those people aren't going to speak up. Because they can get run over just like they've been run over for the last several hundred years. What I do think ought to happen is that um, those big containers that I'm talking about ought to be implemented at all nuclear facilities now. They should be protected from that nasty waste that's been created. They've had to live with it for this long. They're going to have to live with it a little longer. Let's make it safe for them until a permanent repository is found. Let's make sure that they're going to be okay, that their babies are okay, and that their babies are okay. One thing I wanted to mention is that um, I think it's already been mentioned that there were about 30 uh, political leaders in our state that signed on to a letter to the NRC that asked for more time. I have copies of the letter in the other room if you want to review it. And you can see some of those people that signed that letter. But then we've got seven other apparently more qualified, more intelligent, maybe they are on the take. I don't know. But Senator Carol Lavelle, Senator Gay Kernan, Senator Ron Griggs, Representative Catherine Brown, Representative Jim Townsend, Representative Larry Scott, and Representative David Gallegos. How dare you? How dare you withhold evidence, material that they need to know to make fair decisions about me and my family? How dare they? They are wrong and they should be called out on it. And you know what? They got voted into office. Let's boot them out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
so much. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate you all being here. It was good to talk to some of you earlier. I really appreciated that. Um, Robin talking to them. This mic? This mic. <laughs> okay, I'm at the right mic now. So, um, I, I live two miles uh, from uh, the railroad tracks, and the transportation issue is very concerning to me. And just because there hasn't been an accident doesn't mean that there wouldn't be an accident. And really, statistically speaking, when there hasn't been an accident yet, you have a greater possib possibility or probability of having that accident soon. I also ran a small food company for uh, almost 35 years, and we built a six stores, six, six retail stores. We employed 300 people, and we worked with over 300 farmers around the state. So any kind of accident could cause for us um, what people are calling radioactive stigma which is that all of those farmers, that $40 million business, which is really a drop in the bucket when you think that the, just the dairy industry alone is worth about $5 billion annually in New Mexico. Um, our 40 million looks really tiny, but it's the livelihood of 600 people. And to trade that for a mere 55 jobs just doesn't make sense, and it seems that it's really um, not a very well thought out project. So I want to, you, you, one of the things that your uh, poster said is that you're taking into consideration socioeconomic uh, issues, and so that to me is really important, that you could bring, uh, uh, for 55 jobs, Right? You could take away 23,000 jobs in the dairy industry and our measly little 600 jobs, 300 farmers and their livelihood and 300 retail grocery store workers. So I would ask you um, also, if you've never denied a project before, maybe now's the time to change that record, <laughs> that you take a good look at what's happening People here have so much more uh, technological knowledge than I have, and so I would say to you, many people have spoken much more eloquently than I could, but it's really time to deny a project. Um, and I also would say that you need to, and I'll wrap up in a second, that you would need to include in your financial uh, strategies and information the alternatives of what happens if the dairy industry goes down, and how are you going to indemnify people? How are you going to reimburse all of those people whose livelihoods one little accident, one little leak has taken away? And so um, that's really important, and that needs to be in your environmental impact statement. How much, where are you going to find the money? Who's going to cover that insurance cost? How are you going to make all of us whole who might experience an accident, who live along the railroad lines, who farm, who do all of that? So I would ask that. And um, Rose, you were so eloquent and so beautiful, and so many people here have such deep spiritual and social and cultural concerns. And all of that needs to be written really clearly in your environmental impact statement. And I really look forward to seeing you again at the EAS draft hearings. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. John. Turn off the air conditioner. <laughs> Freezing. Is it cold? Cold. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is John Bookser. I live in Santa Fe. Um, I've lived in New Mexico most of my life, and I've come to love New Mexico, and I've even come to love Texans. <laughs> they bring a lot of money to our state, and by golly, they're pretty nice people. Um, I think that Holtec is actually providing a needed solution. However, they are proposing to use it in an extremely inappropriate manner. Um, currently, um, nuclear reactors produce electricity. I use a lot of it. Um, that, but I think we have other alternatives at this point in time. 
Um, the, when a reactor um, fuel rods are used up, they are placed into few pools, and that's actually the most vulnerable part of the fuel process after the used fuel. Then it's placed into a cask and left, at, at, at present it's mostly left on site. Um, it may actually be that leaving the waste for a longer period of time at ground level is good because it generates a lot of thermal heat and if you stick it in a long-term facility, it may not work out so well because of the amount of heat generated that's not dissipated. Um, we should be looking at a process that considers potentially a waste site in every single state because this problem is not just New Mexico's, it's everybody's problem. Until a permanent solution is determined, the waste should not move unless it's a high risk location. San Onofre is a good example. It's both at risk due to tsunami, due to corrosion from um, salt water, and from um, being, living, being very close to a fault line. Um, potential destinations for this waste uh, that's particularly high risk could be military bases or new, nearby reactor sites. They're already guarded. The, the whole tech site is not a controlled airspace. Um, the public along routes needs to be engaged on a regular basis, not grandfathered in because of a past NRC decision. We should stop creating this waste. We should not reprocess it and perpetuate the problem. We have a super nuclear reaction a few million miles away the waste is handled, our atmosphere de deals with what waste products come our way. Let's use that. Let's not turn southeast New Mexico and west Texas into a waste site. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Uh, is Linda Squire or Alan Squire? Linda, come on up. Please talk to us. Uh, we're going to go to, to Melanie Deason, then we're going to get Kevin Camps up here, and then uh, we're going to go to uh, Ram DeGalo, James Pike, Dieter Hanabuki, and Gemma Strong. But this is Melanie, and next Kevin. Thank you for hosting us. I know it was a bit of a journey, but thank you for being here. My name is Melanie Deason. I've lived a decade in Roswell. Shortly before retiring, I spent eight years as wetlands coordinator with the New Mexico Environment Department and wrote the state's EPA-funded wetlands conservation plan. I seriously questioned the science of Holtec's environmental assessment and section on water resources because Holtec violates two siting premises, isolated from populated areas, pay attention on this one, and away from water sources. Their proposed site puts both at risk. Point one, I disagree that there are no sensitive or unique aquatic or riparian habitats or wetlands at their site. Holtec uses a federal jurisdictional wetland definition and fails to mention the 1997 NMED included Playa Lakes as wetlands. Truth, Playa Lakes at Holtec site do meet criteria for New Mexicans wetlands only one of three defining wetland characteristics must be met. Wet soils, wet living plants, or wet conditions. Point two, I take exception to Holtec's misleading surface water statements that there is no external drainage within two playas on site. That losses are only by evaporation, including four off-site ephemeral playas, and that runoff does not drain to the river 26 miles to the west because they portray Playa Lakes as self-contained holding ponds like stock tanks that catch and contain but do not drain. Truth, Playa hydrology is unique and external drainage does exist. By draining down to unseen water tables and aquifers below and substantiated by Holtec's own report, 
my next point. Point three. I commend Holtec's report for stating the site's near surface water table appears to be 35 to 50 feet deep, likely controlled by water levels in Playa Lakes, highly saline from industry abuse. But Holtec ignores the obvious. They propose digging approximately 20 feet below grade, which is dangerously near their admitted fluctuating water table. Past dumping of brine into Playas has reached the Pecos River in this region. Proof that should radiation escape Holtec storage, it could reach the aquifers, not just in New Mexico, but Texas and possibly the Ogallala of eight states. Truth, Holtec storage casts are designed for breathing air, not drowning, from groundwater below or rain above. Any breach, in or out, intensifies and releases radiation to water, ground, and air. Regional heaving and ground subsidence from fracking, common in New Mexico and nearby Texas, could flood Holtec's below ground storage and drop it into the water table below, poisoning the trans Pecos area. Point four, per Holtec's report, April to September thunderstorms provide 60% of the annual flow in the Pecos Basin. But has Holtec forgotten New Mexico's 1938 Pecos River Compact with Texas and the 2009 settlement for sharing the river's irrigation waters? equally as beneficial use of any unappropriated flood waters. Truth, the region's Playa Lakes hydrology ensures these important seasonal rains reach the Pecos River, and because Holtec's own report acknowledges impoundment of all surface water into playas, we've now come full circle. Water does leave Holtec's site, impounded or not, due to Playa Basin's unique hydrology. Holtec's proposal violates the Pecos River Compact. Radiation cannot benefit the food chain. It causes irreversible harm to plants, animals, and humans. That is genocide. I, Melanie Deason, do not consent. Thank you, Melanie. And next we're going we're to hear from uh, Kevin Camps. And then we're going to hear from uh, Rhonda and James. Like Kevin. Thanks, sir. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, NRC, for hosting this uh, town hall-style public comment session. I have prepared several sets of comments on different subject matter, different uh, aspects of the high risks of the whole tech proposal. And if they're of use to anyone in preparing their own comments, please feel free to use them in any way that's helpful. So tonight, I'll start uh, with transportation risks. Uh, the risks of transporting highly radioactive radiated nuclear fuel, whether by train, truck, or barge, on rails, roads, or waterways, is a high risk. The risks include the release of disastrous amounts of hazardous radioactivity, whether due to severe accidents or intentional attacks. Severe accidents could include high-speed crashes into immovable objects, like bridge abutments, or high-temperature, uh, long-duration fires, or long-duration underwater submersions. This is not a complete list. Intentional attacks, such as by anti-tank missiles or shaped charges, could also breach shipping containers and release their contents into the environment. For these reasons, uh, critics have long called such shipments potential mobile Chernobyls, dirty bombs on wheels, and floating Fukushimas. As Holtec Alia has claimed in its license application that any and all NRC certified canisters can be accommodated at this facility, not only rail size shipping containers must be worried about, but so too must legal weight truck casks, which would travel on interstate highways. Thus, whether by truck, train, or barge, on roads, rails, or waterways, the mobile Chernobyl risks of this scheme must be addressed. But another aspect of shipping risks is the risk of so-called routine or incident-free shipments, nonetheless being like mobile x-ray machines that can't be turned off. This phrase was coined by Lauren Olson more than 20 years ago. This is due to gamma and neutron radiation being emitted from the highly radioactive wastes aboard. To shield it all would require radiation shielding so thick that containers would be extraordinarily expensive to construct but also so heavy as to be difficult or impossible to move. So NRC allows a certain amount of gamma and neutron radiation to be emitted. 
Granted, this radioactivity dissipates quickly with distance, but at six feet away from the container's exterior surface, a dose rate of 10 millirem per hour is allowed. That's about one to two chest x-rays worth per hour. At the exterior surface of the container, the allowable dose rate increases dramatically to 200 millirem per hour. That's 20 to 40 chest x-rays worth. Workers such as truck drivers, locomotive engineers, inspectors, security guards, etc., who come in very close physical proximity <coughs> to the shipping container would be exposed to the highest radiation dose rates. But even innocent passers-by and bystanders and the general public would also be exposed. This includes those who live close to transport routes, exposed to large numbers of shipments <coughs> going by over time. Some people, such as pregnant women, should not be exposed to any radiation dose that can be avoided due to the high risk of harm caused to the fetus in the womb. Of course, shipments externally contaminated with radioactivity would emit even worse radiation dose rates. The state of Nevada, based on federal government data, has documented 49 incidents of accidental surface contamination on these highly radioactive waste shipments between the years of 1949 and 1996. And in France, Arriva Corporation had many hundreds of externally contaminated shipments, a full one quarter to one third of all shipments bound for the La Havre reprocessing facility. On average, these French contamination incidents emitted 500 times the allowable radiation dose rates. One even emitted 3,300 times the allowable dose rate. Allowable does not mean safe. Any exposure to ionizing radioactivity carries a health risk, and these risks accumulate over a lifetime. Thank you. And thank you very much, Kevin.